Allô. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, papi. Bonsoir, Eliane. Ça va, Eliane? Oui, ça va. Fatigué, peu préparé pour venir. Résiste. Des jours, on prend avion. Trois jours pour m'atterrir. Dégage, papi. Tu vas venir à l'étoile. Tu vas venir à l'étoile. Si, 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 I moved to the UK when I was 15 years old, but my parents stayed in Mauritius. In the 1960s, hundreds of Chagossians, including my mom, were forced to leave the Chagos archipelago or not allowed to return because the British and US governments wanted to make space for a US military base. That UK-US pact had a detrimental impact for those living on the islands as well as for future generations causing many families to be divided. The islands of the Chagos archipelago are in the Indian Ocean. Under British colonial rule from 1814, it was governed as part of Mauritius. Ce qui est de notre ce qui est de notre vie, un petit bol carré pour tout protéger, une vie pour ça, tout pour une famille, problème là où tout le monde, tout ensemble, pour ça. Là, ça me dit, je vais faire ces gars, tout le monde danser ensemble, mais ça va être joli la vie. In the 1960s, Britain ruled over about 18 countries and three territories in Africa. Many African states were already engaged in the process of starting to fight for their independence. Mauritius was fully engaged in this process. Britain granted independence to Mauritius in 1968, but with a major caveat, the UK would keep the Chagos archipelago for a small price. US government officials in the era of decolonization were growing concerned about losing control of the world. So a group of officials in the US Navy developed a plan to identify small islands around the world and Diego Garcia became the prime island on which they wanted to build a base. Diego Garcia is one of the main islands in the Chagos archipelago where many families had lived for generations. The secret deal began being worked out by the US and British governments in the early 1960s, where the US government insists to the British that we want this base and we want it without any local population. The British government agrees to do the dirty work of getting rid of the Chagossians in exchange for wiping away $14 million in debt that the British government owes the US government. 
British officials fear that if they acknowledge the permanent population of Chagos, they would have to report to the UN about the new colony they had created. What the British do in 1965 is recharacterize the entire population of the Chagos archipelago as contract laborers, not a permanent population, to create the ruse that there's no population. Between 1968 and 1973, the British government removed about 1,500 people from the Chagos archipelago to Mauritius and to the Seychelles. They were not given a choice. The second time I came and I took my clothes and with my clothes, and the rest were all gone. All gone. In the middle of the they were shipped on boats which were carrying bird excrements, which are used for fertilizers. Racism shaped every step of this sad, appalling story. You have a group of almost entirely white Euro-American officials making decisions about a population of African and Indian ancestry and deciding simply that their rights and their interests are unimportant. You can see the racism most blatantly when British officials describe the Chagosians. They are treated as less than human. It's just this great feeling of being able to see your family again. As I got older, I started to be more conscious about the Shagoshan struggle. And with my mom being part of a group, I go with her to meetings and I get to listen to, to their stories. Nous venons ici dans le bureau, nous avons une famille, nous faisons la cuisine, tout ça fait pour nous cultiver la race. Entre nous, nous avons une famille. Je disais que nous tous nous joignons, ça nous amène sur la peine, nous causons ça. Et là, l'autre dit à camarade, arrêtez, ressort, moins courage, vive, nous visez un point, sinon nous sommes malades. Some Chagossians who were forced to leave were first taken to the Seychelles where some stayed with family. The rest were deported to Mauritius separating some families forever. No one received financial compensation from the British government at this time. Following years of protests and legal proceedings, some adult Chagossians living in Mauritius received two payments that they say together amounted to roughly 44,000 Mauritian rupees, or land as an alternative for the second. To receive the second payment, a signature or thumbprint was required. 
form was in a purely English legal contents. That means that most of our people don't speak English. This is a way that British government just wants things to go around so that we don't understand anything. The document stated that Chagossians in Mauritius were agreeing to renounce their right to return to Chagos. We are black people coming from Africa, and this is why we, we got this kind of treatment. Chagossians living in the Seychelles never received any compensation like those in Mauritius and they have not been able to return. In 2000, the British High Court in London ruled that the expulsion of the Chagos Islanders was illegal under UK law. I'm very happy for, for my people uh, because we've been suffered for 35 years. It's a great pressure for us to be allowed to return on our motherland. For a few years, Chagossians could legally return to some of the islands, but were not financially compensated by the UK. Four years later, the UK government, claiming security and cost reasons, reimposed the legal ban on Chagossians returning to their homeland. The UK with the US forced the displacement of an entire population. They blocked their right to return to their homeland and my people were persecuted on the grounds of race. These amount to crimes against humanity according to international law. I fly back home most of the time when it's a big event happening and we want the whole family to be together. In 2003, the British granted British citizenship to the Chagossians and the first generations, which allowed people like my sisters and I to move to the UK. But not everyone had the chance to because there were limitations and restrictions, such as the age of the first generations and the spousal visas. My mom's siblings were not born on the Chagos Islands, so they and my cousins are not eligible for the British citizenship. It just makes me think that if if the Shagoshians were not deported, if my family my grandparents, my mom were allowed back on the islands. None of this would have happened. There are now about 3,000 Shagoshians living in Crawley in the UK. I not want to lose my culture. I created a group called Elderly Lunch Club to give them activity and to forget this pain, to live uh, their lost life in this earth, you know, be happy. Every Wednesday we see this happiness because we see how they feel like free. I was born in Mauritius and I, I was discriminated just because my parents was from Chagos. I realized there was no future for me in Mauritius. When Segoshin were granted British passport in the early 2000s, I saw an opportunity, obviously, you know, for a better life. I came to the UK in 2003 in a group of 26 people. We ended up going to sleep in Gatwick Airport for a week. It was 
embarrassing. We lost our dignity almost 20 years down the line. What has the UK government done to make our life a bit easier? Nothing. Nothing apart from giving us a British passport. Every Chagossian have a different point of view about uh, what they want. But at the end, when you just uh, think about it, we are all fighting for the same thing, for our rights of return. When we talk to the politicians, especially here in the UK, they always say they can't turn the clock back. But for me, I think it's time to turn the clock forward and let Chagossian return to the island. This is not uh, simply a history that, that ended in the 1960s and 1970s. Um, you see US and British officials continuing to disregard the Chagossians and their, their lives, their human rights in uh, pretty much every aspect. Ce n'est pas le cas sans osement. Et c'est sa souffrance qui m'a passé. C'est pénant. Oui, ça. Sa souffrance qui m'a passé. Retournement, là, moi, ça gosse. Retournement. Moi, j'ai envie de vivre là-bas. Mes enfants, j'ai envie de tout la terre. Quand j'ai ma main pour la naissance. Ça, en vrai, puis c'est inconnu de souffrance. When you've done wrong, you have to right the wrong. And righting the wrong includes not only bringing it to an end, allowing them to go back, but fully compensating the individuals for the terrible harm that has been done. We condemn what has been done to us, which we consider as a crime against humanity, because destroy our culture, uprooting our people, it's not a way of letting people live as, as human beings. The right to return has been the fight since day one, and still is for most, because we want a place where we can call home and have a sense of belonging and not suffer from racism or discrimination. <laughs>